working. Having Avery is not like having a normal cat. Oh. Sphinxes are very inquisitive by nature. Except steady. Oh! She'll just come up out of nowhere and just, you know, lash out. Scratch, bite, attack. Literally attack. Can you handle her? I want to be comfortable in my own home. I want her out. I'm Jackson Galaxy. I'm a musician by night and a cat behaviorist by day. I've met cats with all kinds of problems. Hey, stop it! Hey, ow! But I've never met one I couldn't help. In my career, I've worked with thousands of cats one-on-one, -on -one, analyzing their behaviors and retraining them and their guardians. When relationships are at an end... It's getting to the point where I feel resentful. And cat guardians have reached their emotional limit. I want her out. I'm their last hope. Ow! You got scratched. It's because you've got him in a pretty helpless position. Cats have nine lives, but humans only have one. I can't believe this is the same cat. <laughs> I'm Sean Roach. And I'm Lindsay Roach. We've been together for actually about 10 years, but it wasn't until about two weeks ago that we Got became married. officially Mr. and Mrs. Roach. After our previous cat, Sundari, passed away, I decided to make a secret purchase, and um, I bought Avery. I had such a connection to my last cat, Sundari, that when she passed, I was just totally heartbroken. And when Avery came in, I think that there was some resentment that I had towards her. I've worked with wildlife for 10 years and, you know, and, and referred to as a wildlife expert. All in all, I have about 20 different exotic animals, mainly arthropods, so things that creep and crawl. All of these animals are in what we affectionately call the animal room. The animal room is also my office, so I spend a lot of time in there working on the computer. And my old cat used to just sit on the computer on my lap. No problems. She was interested in things, but she wasn't going to take it to the level that Avery does. She wants to get on top of the cages, and that can be an issue because cages can buckle. You have a screen top, and the snake can get out. And you know, clearly, uh, I don't want snakes and tarantulas and scorpions out of their cages. Avery is like a toddler that you've given a bowl full of sugar and five cups of coffee pretty much um, all the time. No, 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 no! Avery! No, get back. I'm lucky, and um, I get to leave the house and go to work. The rest of the day, I get to watch the cat, chase the cat, tell the cat no. Sometimes I see Avery, and my anxiety level just automatically rises. Throughout our house, we have a lot of art. Uh, we have a lot of valuables. She risks destroying them. Oh. We'll almost start fighting over Avery. Come on, no! You know, I'll say like, you don't have to get so mad, she's just a cat. No, 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 no. And then... She's not just a cat. <laughs> and then, you know... She's not just a cat. She's, uh, she's something else. As newlyweds, we really don't need the extra tension or the stress that Avery can sometimes bring. I'm kind of hoping that magic is real and that Jackson holds the key to some sort of ability to, you know, wave a magic wand or cast some sort of spell. Other than that, it's tough for me to believe that he's going to be able to come in here and, and make the changes that we want, but we're hopeful.
sometimes I find the problem I'm dealing with is much more human than feline. But my job remains the same regardless, to get human and cat on the same page. Hey there. Hey, how how's you doing? it going? Great, man. How you I'm doing? Jackson. I'm Sean. Sean. Hi, I'm Lindsay. This Lindsay. is Avery. Hey, Avery. What's up? When I first saw Jackson, I was excited because he wasn't like an old cat guy like I was afraid of. Have a seat, my friend. OK. How are you guys? Great that you're here, man. We've been uh, very anxiously waiting for your arrival to see what you can do here. We got Avery about two years ago. And uh, when we first got her, you know, she was that kitten ball of energy that you expect. She has not grown out of it. She's just into everything. Avery is so true to the Sphinx breed that I had barely sat down, and she was already climbing the walls. So th this, is, this is one of the things that she does on an all Yeah, I mean, and as a result of her being everywhere, uh, she destroys things. These figurines over here, they're all limited edition. These aren't regular toys that you see. Um, she just chewed them up, and it's a shame because I wanted to display some of the art that we have around the house. Also, she runs out the door whenever anybody opens it. My job here is to get you on the same page as Avery. I need you to understand the world the way Avery sees it. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, mm -hmm. I, I think things will be really workable. All right, guys, the next thing I want to do is just take a tour of the territory. So mm -hmm. if you can take okay. me around the house, that'd be great. Happily, yeah, come Let's on. Let's do it. I'm particularly eager to see the animal room, because not only is it Sean's workspace, but it's a room that Avery is drawn to like a magnet. What do we got here? Oh, boy, we've got a lot. Um, starting here, we've got an African ball python. If Avery was in here, she'll be trying to get into the cage. That's she does the try to get in. Yes. If she, she does. could, she would. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing is, I'm always on guard. This is Avery's buddy. Look, girl, it's your friend. Now, Avery. Oh! Jeez. <laughs> get down, see how curious she is. Which is cool. I mean, I would be too, but if I was a little cat, Snake came down towards me. I'm not gonna, you know, try and uh, jump in the cage with him. I gotta tell you, see, it's, it's amazing because I, I know what you love to do. I know the snakes are your thing. Yeah. And watching her zip into these guys and zoom in on them as, as prey, it gives us a really heavy clue as to what she makes her tick yeah. and yeah. what's gonna make her happy. Sphinxes are very inquisitive by nature. They're constantly on the move, constantly looking for stimulation. Her fascination with the animals in Sean's room is inherent to who she is. This is just a great example of Avery. Just, she's into everything. Everything's hers, you know? We're in her house, not the other way around. Come here, girl. Her curiosity definitely pushes her to a level to where I get uncomfortable when I turn around and I see her on top of something. Or, yeah. You know, potential of knocking something over. Right, right. And the concern, more than anything, is just her getting into something to where that animal escapes. I just wish that she knew her boundaries. Sean makes it a point of saying that those animals are off limits to Avery, but he's sort of teasing her with a no without giving her a yes right behind him. And that's just not working. Gotta show you a truly amazing arachnid. Honey, will you kind of uh, keep an eye on that little rascal there? This is called a cave spider. I have these little huts here that I built. You know, that's kind of replicating the caves and the nooks and crannies that they'd be, you know, squeezing into in their oh, natural environment. Oh, great idea, yeah. I seriously can't believe that Sean knows how to meet the needs of an exotic spider, yet he has no idea how to meet the needs of his exotic cat. There's Avery on top of the cage. Turn our back and what happens? Avery jumps up. Oh! That's just like embarrassing. Avery. I think Jackson got the perfect visual of how she is, generally speaking. I don't think Avery knows what it means to be on good behavior. So let me, let me tell you what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. There's obviously a problem. Mm -hmm. It's not Avery's problem. It's, it's what you guys have and don't have in here that's causing the problem. Okay. Avery doesn't have a natural habitat. The typical Sphinx is incredibly active. So actually, Avery is pretty normal for a Sphinx. They're high energy cats, and they need outlets that satisfy the breed. One of the things that I'm not seeing here mm -hmm. is any place for her to perch, any place for her to get some vertical distance from the floor and mm -hmm. do it comfortably. She's not just climbing blinds to climb blinds. 
She's trying to see the world outside. I want to start seeing ways for her to get up on sills and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I want you to take a critical eye to mm -hmm. is that you have one piece of cat furniture in the whole house. You know, again, a, a, comparing and contrasting old cat to new cat, it, it might sound crazy, but this setup is pretty much how it's been more or less for the past six years of living here. Yeah. Four of those years were with our old cat, mm -hmm. and she seemed to be fine. The Sphinx needs spaces to climb and explore. Sean's old cat was not a Sphinx, Avery is. He needs to stop drawing comparisons between these two cats in terms of their behaviors and concentrate on the cat he's got right now. The next thing we're gonna do mm -hmm. is more fun. Good. This is the fun part, yay! <laughs> the toy that I think I'd like to play with Mm -hmm. is this very toy right here. This one replicates, obviously, ground prey. This is a mouse. Okay. Okay, with a little tail and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. obviously, she's dying for something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And you see that in your animal room, too, right? I mean, you see sure. it as yeah. soon as... So this is the kind of activity that I am really gonna wanna draw out of her. Mm -hmm. Toys are a great way to stimulate the prey drive of any sphinx. In the meantime, it's a sneaky way to lead them towards the places you want them to be and away from the places you don't want them to be. Mm -hmm. And if you make this world sort of a playground, mm -hmm. she, the, the, again, the need to escape will be less. This toy, which is our laser pointer, mm -hmm. see how she's responding to that? Mm -hmm. That is the toy that you use when she's starting to do something you don't want her to do. Anyone can use a laser pointer to guide a cat where they want them to go. It can be used to guide Avery away from the door, which will make Lindsay and Sean's comings and goings a whole lot easier. Where are you? You see this? There we go. What is that? There we go. What is that? Yeah, she would have she would have bolted out by now. This is now yours. Yay! Yay! So again, coming in the door, and that is all she needs. I think that. Jackson um, is telling us things that um, we wouldn't have thought of by ourselves. For Sean and Lindsay's homework, I'm having them work with the laser pointer at the front door, put up shelving units and a cat tower in the living room, and keep the animal room off limits. Because if Avery gets in there unsupervised, all hell could break loose again. Last week, I left Sean and Lindsay with a list of homework and a video camera so they could document their progress for me and I could see what was going on when I wasn't there. They emailed me the videos and I'm eager to talk to them about what I saw. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Hey, pumpkin pie. How have things been? Oh, they've been eventful as always. <laughs> yeah, they've been good. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the exercise that you were doing at the door with her. What it comes down to really is the concept of commitment to your actions. I need Lindsay to see how she's exiting and entering the room the wrong way and how Sean's actually doing it the right way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Lindsay walking in the door. How embarrassing. That's <laughs> 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 true. <laughs> yep. Okay. You got it, yeah. That's Lindsay walking in the door. Now I'm gonna do Sean walking in the door. Okay. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay, now the difference is he was aware, but he was committing to the action. You're, you're moving from fear, he's moving from confidence. That's the only difference. All right, this wonderful cat tree that you guys bought, I commend you on. Thank you. Yeah, we're pretty happy with it. She's pretty happy with it, which is more important. Yeah. You know, Sean, I saw in home video, you showed her how to use it, and boom, 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 she was up. It's a lot of fun just what you know, the, when she first jumped up on, we were both like, yes. So here's the thing. I mean, we're creating this world of vertical space also to play into the fact that she's a sphinx. I really want her to jump from here to the valance confidently. Mm -hmm. We can move this back eventually, but I think what I'd really like to do is reposition this. Now, she can go hoppity hop. Here, here, it's almost like walking. Yeah. I mean, look, she's naturally so curious. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! <laughs> Good girl. That's the first time she did it. You see how she's got that look on her face like, cool, what's, mm. what's, where's the pot of gold at the end of this rainbow yeah. there, you know? Giving a sphinx like Avery room to vertically explore is key because her breed dictates that she has that way to release energy. 
Now, that leads me to my next point. I did want you to put toys up here, something like that. Yeah. So right now she jumps up, she's like, <laughs> now what, you right? So we're gonna come down here, again, another piece of fleece, sisal, something like that. Kay. Destination, the last piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. I asked you to put a shelf here, I really do wanna still see it, so that she can go jump, boink, here she is. Cool. If she's up at a level, mm -hmm. I don't think she's gonna scoot out the door. That's a real necessary addition. Okay, cool, yeah, a couple zips on the table saw and cut it out and boom, boom, Do it. done. One of the great things about seeing a sphinx like Avery fully engaged is you get to see what their nature is as a cat. Any cat, but very especially the sphinx, mm -hmm. they work like this. I wake up, I wanna kill something. I want to hunt it down, I want to mangle it, then I want to eat something, and then I, I'll sleep for a little while. What we're going to do is give her that kill time, mm -hmm. okay? This bird, look at that, as tired as she was, she's up again. Yeah, that's a cool toy, check that out. Now, what it, first, what, first it. what we're going to do is we're going to establish that we are in the air. Now, if you guys listen. Uh -huh. That flapping that wing cool. sound mm -hmm. will really get cool. her into it. Sometimes she loses it, and then you have to present it. Huh. Play for cats is not all about the action. It's about the preparation. When they're focused in on something, that's just equal. You see this part right here? Yeah. <laughs> the subtleties, that's just as big a part as this. Yeah. The running, the jumping. The way Avery should look after a proper play session is what we saw on her side. I really want to keep playing, but my body won't let me. And that's where we want her. That is going to allow us to reset her body clock and regulate her energy. So getting Avery to go onto places and get into things isn't you know, too much of an issue. Keeping her off of things, that's the problem. And then I have this area here that's been pretty consistently a problem. This is my suggestion for you. Cool. You value these toys a lot, I know that. Mm -hmm. So we have to repurpose this cabinet mm -hmm. so that you have things, like maybe you have a, a loose side front to this, put mm -hmm. some hinges on it, something where you can display them the way you want to display them. You, yeah. you want them to be out. Yeah. At the same time, you want them protected. Now that I've shown Sean and Lindsay the possibilities of what can be done in the living room in terms of vertical space, play with vertical space, territorial confidence, now I feel like I can bring that into the animal room and show them that they can do sort of the same thing and have Sean be confident with that. Now, we're gonna take this room, and she's like, I'm in, I'm yeah. in. <laughs> Somebody make sure to keep an eye on her at all times. I want you to relax. I want you to be okay yeah. with her being around. Sean has to see the beauty in allowing Avery into the animal room. He needs to know that providing her with cat TV is an amazing way to drain off that natural sphinx energy. I want to give her appropriate perches. So here, we have yeah. an inappropriate perch, because this inappropriate perch leads to up there. Yeah. So what I would like to do is perhaps have something that is further out. I mean, I've worked many years with things called cat windowsills. Mm -hmm. So it, it comes off the sill, but it's sturdy, and it's far enough away, uh -huh. and it'll hang lower than the sill, yeah. that there's no way she could jump. I really do have a lot of respect and admiration for what Sean does as a profession and the care that he shows for the animals in his care, the environmental enrichment. I just want to see that light come on in his eyes where he shows that same consideration to Avery's environment. Because if not, Avery will not get better. And now it's time for a kitty bit. How fast can a domestic cat run? 15 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, or 45 miles per hour? Find out after the break. How fast can a domestic cat run? They can run up to 30 miles per hour. The fastest human sprinter can only run 28 miles per hour. Sean and Lindsay are beginning to see that Avery's not a bad cat. She's just a sphinx who wasn't provided with a proper environment. Their home is becoming a place where she can thrive. And with Sean letting her into the animal room, he's finally embracing Avery and letting go of the past. The room is symbolic in a way. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and by, by, by bringing her in there and, and saying, 
be with me here. Mm -hmm. it, huge Let's step. Hang. Let's have fun. Huge step. Yeah. I love that, and I miss that, you know, with, with Sundari. You coming here has really given us the opportunity to talk about that, talk about Sundari okay. and that loss, which will honestly forever, till the day that I die, I will love and I will miss that cat. Of course. You know, she's a part of my heart. Yes. Um, so emotional. I mean, still, two years uh, in that cat's that's part of having a pet. You lose them, it's tough. It, it's part of the deal, right? But um, we've been able to talk about that, how that was hard. And now... And how that those resentments were there. Right. It's upsetting. This is really an important revelation for Sean. He needs to experience this grief, to move through it, so that he can finally have a relationship with the cat that's right in front of him. I'm a little sensitive for the... <laughs> when it comes to my animals and my pets, yeah. you know. Today I get to find out whether Sean has actually embraced everything that Avery is, which is a young, active sphinx. Hi. Hey. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. Come on in. Good, good. Today, I'm walking into a veritable sphinx paradise. There are all kinds of places for her to climb and explore and survey her domain. Come here, girl. Oh, wow, I didn't even notice that shelf over there. Come here. Let's show Jackson what we've been up to. Come on. Oh, oh, come here. One more. Oh, righteous. <laughs> One more. Oh, oh, righteous. Very close. Oh, come oh, righteous. Right. Oh, oh, she wants it so bad. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, uh, a new stuff going on, huh? Here's her new oh, favorite yeah, little yeah. spot. The addition of the door shelf is a way to keep Avery up and still looking out the door without being on the ground, which actually encourages her to run right out. Now I walk out the door. Now I walk out the door, and you look at the neighborhood. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. It is really gratifying to see how successful Sean and Lindsay have been in transforming their home into a sphinx-friendly environment. I had this blanket, uh -huh. the most comfortable, wonderful blanket in the world. I would wrap myself up in it every winter. Oh my god, did you donate the blanket to the cause? Yeah. I cut up the blanket. <laughs> Sean. I realized it was the per it was like meant to be, dude. The the size was perfect and it actually had two pieces. So when I cut it, this is rocket. <laughs> when I cut the blanket, it was like a pocket. So I tucked it all back behind here. And then I used those and put this. I don't know if oh, you remember. Oh, 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 yeah. This was just wood. So now this is really soft. She's familiar with it, the smell, the Does feel. Does she hang here? She totally. Yeah. This is her, like, she's all about it up here. I covered this with clear acrylic. Oh, right. There you go. Kitty right. proof, right? So now Sean's Spruce happy. And... Everyone can see his toys. <laughs> yep. You guys have done an absolutely amazing job. You've, you've just, you've embraced this mm -hmm. so well. Now, speaking of the embracing part, mm -hmm. I want to see the animal room. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, and hey, in girl. she comes. Yep, she lets you know wherever she is. Cool. <laughs> Move some things around. Let's go into her new favorite spot, and she'll just kind of sit there. One thing I really missed, not to harp on my old kitty too much again, but uh, was the time that I got to spend with her while I was doing my work, having there my buddy go. around. There you go. Now I've got Avery around. What's funny is before when I was distracted by Avery because yeah. I was afraid of her getting into something or causing some sort of problem. Yeah. Now I'm distracted by her because she's so much fun to watch, the interactions, and you can see all of her expressions, you know? The ears go back, her face squishes up, her eyes get big, right, and she right. is so engaged. With the issues addressed and the behavior under control, Sean is in that great position of just being able to watch Avery and enjoy her being a sphinx. I feel like, you know, things have gotten a lot better. I'm not, there's not the tension in the air when I get home. Um, Sean's in a good mood, which makes me in a good mood. Avery seems really happy. And so now, instead of driving us crazy, she's actually entertaining us. She's fun to watch. She'll just come up out of nowhere and just attack, literally attack. The concept is the fairy dust doesn't exist. There's work involved. I want her out. She's about to go nuts. Uh -oh. You're 
crazy, Fifi. You're crazy. I'm Dave. And I'm Leslie. And we've been dating for about nine months. Nine months, yeah. I just moved from San Francisco. I uprooted my life that I loved to come to LA uh, and live with Dave and take our relationship further. It was, it was quite a surprise to know that Fifi was going to be living with us. Fifi actually was my old roommate, Alvina's cat, and we lived in this condo on the ninth floor. Fifi um, liked to sit out on the balcony on the, um, the railing, and twice she fell off the, the balcony. Alvina was at her wit's end. She had to get rid of Fifi, and I was moving in with Leslie, so I decided I would take Fifi. It's been a complete nightmare, just in terms of my allergies. I'm constantly taking allergy medication, and it makes me sleepy. It, it just totally, I'm not like in my right head. And I'll be just sitting at my desk, minding my own business, and she'll just come up out of nowhere and just, you know, lash out, scratch, bite, jump in my lap, attack, literally attack. I have. I have cat scratches all over me. It's, it's been a huge hassle for me. I, I do feel betrayed by Fifi because I saved her life, I took her in, and instead of behaving and showing appreciation, she attacks me, she stalks Leslie. She doesn't just swat at you, she, uh, she goes in for the kill, and that's when you're trying to pet her and be nice to her. I think that despite Leslie's allergies, that if Fifi was a nice cat, Leslie could live with her, and it's just the fact that it's the behavior that's bothering Leslie. I want to be comfortable in my own home. I want her out. With each new case, I always remind myself that part of my job is to help cat guardians recognize where their own actions feed into feline bad behaviors. Jackson. Hi. Hi, I'm Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Good to Come meet in. you. Hey there. So tell me about Fifi. Fifi attacks everybody. Attacks everybody. She, she will attack. She scratches people. She'll, she'll do this thing where she'll come up to you and sort of nuzzle against your leg like she's going to be nice, and then she'll bite you. Can you handle her? Can you pick her up? Can you? I know how to pick her up, like to keep her from scratching me. You pick her up like You're this. You're saying yeah. She's like no, no, he, no, 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 no. He can't. You you can't handle her. I just I just know you pick her up like it's like a, an explosive device and you kind of hold it out here. Because <laughs> if I get her anywhere around here, she like digs her back claws into me. Okay. If I turn her. She, if she gets, I mean, she will go. She has a reach and she'll. So scratch. it goes without saying that you've never clipped her claws. No, no. That's I've tried to do that. That's impossible. Okay, so claws not clipped. Well, then of course you're going to wind up getting mangled. For me, it's um, I've I've always been allergic to cats. Having a cat around, I'm already kind of guarded because I'm like, oh, I'm going to get allergic. Let's talk about the allergies: uh, throat closing or sneezing. Throat eyes. closing, eye sneezing, itchy nose, runny nose. A few people will come up, and she'll kind of rub up against my ankles, and. My original reaction is to jerk because right. I'm like, oh God, what is she gonna do? And then she scratches or she bites of and then course. she runs away. Do you not want her here? I would prefer her not to be here because I work from home a lot and it's getting to me. I, I'm gonna work on, a, on an assumption here, which might be dangerous, but if we work with your approach to her, that you'll see that completely mellow out. The concept is the fairy dust doesn't exist there's work involved. What I want to try to do as I'm working with the cat is also work with you because I think expectations have to be adjusted. I want to be sensitive to the fact that you can't breathe. You know, I mean, that's the, the aggression is something completely different. We can work with that. The breathing is something that we can try to address, but I want you to know, I know how not fun it is, so. Uh. It's not fun. But I'd also like Leslie to be able to see what is special about Fifi, what I, what right. I see that's special. I'm relieved to hear that at least Dave is invested in Fifi. Now, once we get past Leslie's allergies, I'm hoping she'll be as committed as he is. The first thing I want to see, though, is the two of them interact with Fifi so I can see exactly what they're doing wrong. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see. 
What's got here? Fifi, don't attack. Normally, I, I have to be honest, I grab Fifi and I just love her so much, I just, sque I just squeeze her and I play with her head like, like that. Yeah. And then, um, and then she turns around and gets a little bit irritated at me. I thought one of the funniest things was watching Dave show me how he plays with Fifi, which really came down to you're a black lab, not a cat. You know, the... My scent is pretty heavy on the glasses, so I usually try to present it to them. You see what she's doing right now? I'm presenting neutrality. I'm not attempting anything. Look, I'm no different from anybody else. When I first meet a cat, I want to pet them but what I really have to do is let the cat come and pet me. She needs to show me what feels good, and then we can establish a relationship from there. Good girl. Good girl, pumpkin. Yes. I know, you dig that. Yes, exactly. Oh, awesome. Exactly right. That is love. That's how she expresses love to you. All the rest of it is gonna get you hurt. It was amazing to see Jackson's energy sort of redirect Fifi and sort of um, keep her rage from exploding like it normally does. Here's what I really want to do with yeah. you. I want to work on how you perceive her, OK? Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that you're a yoga instructor, because we can, we can approach this from, from your place. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to do that. I'm a complete yoga novice. Okay. And I'm coming into your class for the first time. How do I start? You know, just. Let it go. Let it all go. When you say let it go, what are you talking about? Let what go? What am I letting go? Everything. Just um, all your thoughts. Slowing it down. Slow it down as much as you can. Anything that you're holding on to that is um, making you clench your body, tighten your body. Can I just say what I just noticed? What did you notice? She was here and you were oblivious. The tools that you bring from yoga yeah. are the tools that you're going to bring to Fifi. I think it kind of works in a very interesting place because your desire and your ability to accept physical affection from her right now are pretty limited because of the allergies yes. and the fear that you yes. bring a little bit. Leslie really needs to understand and also internalize that she has to approach the cat the way she approaches her practice of yoga in a centered, relaxed, grounded way. You know, one thing that we haven't spoken about at all is the fact that she loved being out on that balcony. Oh, she loves it. Yeah. Cats are either tree dwellers, meaning they like to be up on things, surveying the domain, or they're bush dwellers. They like to be down low with all four feet touching the ground at all times. Hearing the Fifi used to like to perch on the very edge of Dave's balcony tells me straight up that she is a tree dweller. I want Dave and Leslie to construct an enclosed patio area, a catio, so that Fifi has a safe place to get up on things, be the tree dweller that she is, live the life she's supposed to live. OK, I mean, we don't have a lot of space out to work with. So really, it's about a little bit of shelving, a little bit of ways that she can hop up, see over. We got birds in the trees. We got some squirrels on the ground. You know, that kind of thing. Sure. We're gonna give her some places to graze out there. And really, it would be an amazing place, not only for her to hang out, but for you to be able to breathe a little bit better. I totally see where Jackson is coming from. I definitely wanna apply what he said and see what happens. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. My action plan for Dave and Leslie is, first, build that catio. Give Fifi a safe and elevated place to own. Secondly, address Leslie's allergies. Bathe and brush Fifi regularly and get an air filter. Lastly, Dave and Leslie have to start taking a long, hard look at their own energy that they bring to this cat. Dave's gotta stop roughhousing with her. Leslie has got to drop all the stress and tension that she brings to this cat every time she sees her. Last week, I left Dave and Leslie with a list of homework, as well as a video camera so they could document their progress for me. They emailed me some footage, and I saw some good things, and I saw some not so good things, but I'm really eager to talk to them about everything. Hey, Jackson, hey, how are you? Good seeing you. Good, man. How are you? Good, come on in. So, how are you guys? Great. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. 
Good. We're better. We're definitely better. Optimistic, cautiously optimistic. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I feel better around her. Great. And I think she's feeling a little better around me. I just want to note what just happened. She walked by here a second ago, and as compared to the last time I was here, you didn't do the leg twitch. I think Fifi um, has seen that Leslie's put a lot of effort into things this week. We went to, we took her together jointly to get her nails clipped. Uh, I think since we've gotten her um, nails clipped that I feel a little bit less scared to right, just being right. around her and okay, it's not gonna hurt as bad. So when she has scratched me, it hasn't been. Right, because there's the been points nearly what it there. was. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What about the, were you able to, at the groomer, were you able to bathe her too? We bathe her ourselves. We actually attempted it ourselves. We are about to attempt to give Fifi the bath. Um, as you can see, we lit some candles, some incense, try to set the mood to relax Fifi, so hopefully um, it'll work out. It's actually not that bad. Yeah, she looks like she's getting into it. I love it. No, seriously, I do love it. I mean, that's fantastic. So the next thing I want to get to is the handling. What you wind up doing is you start going from play to roughhousing to soothe. It, it's like trying to eat breakfast and brush your teeth at the same time. If you're going to commit to play, you commit to play. If you're going to commit to rest, you commit to rest. You know, I really need to see Dave play with Fifi again because I really need to point out exactly what he's doing wrong. Like, just grab her, just grab her and just play with her and just kind of throw go for her it. around. And then she'll like try to bite me back, but I go, no, you can't bite me. You can't bite me. Yeah, like, you like oh, that? Yes, I can. You like that? And then. Grr. I know my cat and I swear she likes that. What Dave is doing wrong by roughhousing with Fifi, he's showing her that arms and feet are appropriate toys, so of course she's going to play with them at every chance she gets. The catio is another important outlet for Fifi, but right now it's just a screened-in porch. I need to show Dave and Leslie how exactly to make a catio out of this. What I would like to do, I want to try something different. Okay. I want to take this perch and I'd like to put it out on the catio. Any patio can be a catio, but without enough places to perch and explore, it's just a big cage. Uh-oh. Whoa. We have chair. We have semi-liftoff. Most people think that cats sleep all day, which is just a fallacy. What they do all day is what she's doing right now. Now, this is where she's going to hang. She's grooving right now, she right? She is. Look, she's, she's up. She's happy up there. This is where she's going to find her peace. We are so lucky. You guys are so lucky. As soon as levels were present for her, that scratcher in that chair, she was up. She was looking outside. The world was open and inviting, and it became cat TV immediately. I'm seeing these little small steps with Fifi, with Leslie and Fifi, that are really giving me hope. It's going to make her want to keep Fifi. And that she's gonna be a part of our lives forever. Look, I'm not saying that I'm completely willing to just let Fifi, you know, into our lives. But I will say this, that her behavior has kind of changed my perspective on things. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. What I'm really hoping to find today is a better behaved Fifi, obviously, but also Leslie having embraced Fifi's behavior and her personality, and Dave being able to relax that he's not going to have to choose between his girlfriend and his cat. Come on in. Great. Hey, Dave. Hey, Jackson, how are you? Great to see you, man. Great to see you. Come on in. I have something to show you over here. Amazing. This Guess is who? amazing. Fifi's fantasy What's forest. What's up, Fifi? It's a, this is outstanding. This is amazing. I, I, and look, it even has a little bird's nest little and everything. Birds there for <laughs> Fifi's predatory instincts. I put Dave out there sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely amazing. I love what you've done, having some cat grass down there for her to graze on. I, I'm, I'm really happy. I mean, you guys followed yeah. through. You listened. And Fifi loves it. She yeah. spends a lot of time out there, which is nice. For you. 
It's fun, yes. yeah. No, it's great. BP's out there. And yeah. it's a little bit more airy. You know, we yes. keep the door open, and, and she comes in and out when she pleads. And, and obviously... then look at, look at this. Fifi has been giving Leslie love. In that moment where Fifi walked up and she pet Leslie, that shows confidence, it shows comfort, it shows ownership of territory, which Leslie's a part of. And Leslie went along with it. It was really nice to watch. We got her these little, well, I bought her these little um, mice so she can stalk the mice rather Leslie than Leslie bought her toys. I bought her toys, I bought her treats. Things are so much easier here now with her. Good. Allergies are, I would say, at least like 85% better. The air filter has helped immensely as well. I think just for Dave and I, I mean, the way we're kind of interacting now and addressing some difficult situations that before we'd kind of brush under the rug because we didn't want to stir the pot. And, and now we're kind of like, okay, we have a problem. Let's talk about it. Let's compromise, which right. I think that's been the biggest thing is compromise. And, and you know, the thing is that really most of the time, if there's a relational problem underlying the furry problem. All right, guys, I'm absolutely loving what I'm hearing from you right now. I'd love to see a little bit more interaction. Mm -hmm. Aww. Good girl. What used to happen was we, when we were sitting on the couch, Fifi would kind of climb up under the couch and swat at Leslie's ankles, scratch us just out of nowhere, come up behind us on the back and scratch us in the head. And um, that just doesn't happen anymore. Here, jump up here. A little treat for you. Look at how natural she is up there. Mm -hmm. Look. Does she spend much time just sort of looking at the world right now? Yeah, she loves to just you know get out there and look out around at the world and see what's out there. And then I kind of lead her down through here. Fifi, here you look. I love the way that that, that you've learned, mm -hmm. the way that you lead her to things. The the knowledge of your cat right now is really kind of it makes me proud. Well, I, I just I really you've really taught that I need to respect her and her, her wishes and not force her right to do things right. Fifi's a really independent cat, so you know she's gonna do what she wants to do. But I've noticed that her anxiety levels come way down, and she can relax when we're in the room, which we you know didn't see before. I'm really grateful to Jackson because one, he helped solve a, an issue we were having it was causing a lot of you know, tension. <laughs> um, and also, Fifi's much happier. And just to see her on her cat perch looking down, it's almost like she's a part of the household and she's there protecting us rather than she's the predator. When I first met Fifi, she was scratching and biting Dave and Leslie, basically terrorizing them in their own home. Now, she has this great new relationship with Leslie. She doesn't lash out unpredictably anymore. And she seems to have found her place in the world. Instead of swiping at your ankles, she is up in her catio, looking at the world. It's so amazing to see.